<gasps> Hello everyone, dear friends. The weather is just wonderful outside today. I wonder what adventures await me today? What? I think Mikey's coming to me. Mikey, it's open. JJ, do you know the scary stories? Well, yes, I know a couple. I have just a great idea, JJ. Let's tell some scary stories today. Wow, Mikey, the idea is really great. Okay, I agree. But first, let's welcome our dear viewers. Of course, JJ, go ahead. Hello, everyone, dear friends. Mikey and I are going to scare you today. We will have one round in total, and you decide who won in the comments. Are you ready, Mikey? Of course, JJ. Then we're starting. Round one. Today, I will scare you first. JJ and I talked a little before the start of the release and decided that while we are telling you scary stories, I will build Nerpo and JJ, in turn, will build Househead. So here we go. The blue cat. One girl painted a big cat on the wall. Blue paint, because she didn't have any other colors. Many people, after seeing the drawing, even at first thought that it was a real cat and were surprised that it was such an unusual color and they showed it to others. Look how beautifully it is drawn. And the other three girls from the yard, who could not draw so well, became jealous. They took black paint and painted over the drawing. When the girl saw that her drawing was painted, she burst into tears and could not calm down for a long time. Then one of the three girls had a dream, as if a big blue cat had come to her at night. He sat on top of the blanket, and when the girl opened her eyes, he hissed and hit her with a paw with sharp claws. When the girl woke up in the morning, her whole face was covered in blood, and there were such deep scratches on her face that they had to be sewn up in the hospital. The next night, the cat came to another girl. She woke up when she heard the blue cat jump on the windowsill and scream. The girl jumped up and wanted to run away, but the cat jumped on her shoulders and clawed at her head. When the girl's mom and dad came running into the room, she was lying on the floor and her whole head and back were scratched. The third girl, upon learning about this, took a large iron nail and began to scratch the wall with it, where there was a black spot on top of the drawing with a cat. With a nail, the girl tore off almost all the paint from the wall. Well, now he won't be able to come to me, but at night, the blue cat came for her too. In the morning, the parents found the girl dead. The police later said that the girl had been strangled. They also found bloody traces of large cat paws on the bed, on the floor, and on the window. Then people said they saw a blue cat painted on the wall. The drawing was like a real one, seen on different walls, in different parts of the city. Sometimes the cat was asleep in the drawing. Sometimes it was licking its fur. But more often, it was sitting and looking for something, or someone else. And if children passed by the drawing, they felt that the cat was looking at them. And we tried to get through as quickly as possible. And in that house, where a painted blue cat appeared on the wall, someone always died later. That's the story about the blue cat. And this story tells you that you can't spoil other people's toffee things. Therefore, never damage someone else's property. JJ, do you like cats? Hmm, let me think about it. I think that yes, the cats are very cute. That's how JJ answered me but he doesn't know the story about this dangerous but very cute cat. The Doll Shop. One girl was walking with her grandmother in the park and saw a store where there were big, beautiful dolls behind the glass. The girl really wanted such a doll, and she began to ask her grandmother, let's go to this store and buy a doll. Which store? Grandma was surprised. Yes, this one. The girl pointed with her hand, but the grandmother did not see anything and thought that the girl must have fallen ill and quickly took her home to check her temperature. But the girl turned out to be healthy. The next day, when she went for a walk outside, she saw the doll shop again. Now, the store was right in the yard. The girl immediately ran home. Mom, there's a doll shop there, and the dolls there are so big and beautiful. Buy me one, please. But when the mother and the girl went down to the yard, the store had already disappeared. The next night, the girl woke up to the fact that her room was as bright as day. The light was coming from the window. The girl went to the window and saw that it was no longer a window, but a glass door to a doll store. Then the girl grabbed the piggy bank from the shelf and immediately went into the store before it disappeared again. You probably want to buy a doll, the salesman asked the girl. The girl looked at him and was scared. For some reason, she thought he looked like a big spider. It even seemed to her that instead of hands, he had long spider legs with claws. 
But then the seller took one doll off the shelf and put it next to the girl. The doll was so beautiful and so big, almost like the girl herself. And it seemed very, very real. The girl thought that she didn't have enough money in her piggy bank to buy such a doll. How much does this doll cost? The girl asked. The seller stretched out his hand and pointed to the piggy bank. The girl handed over the piggy bank. Can I take the doll? Said the girl. The salesman nodded his head. The girl grabbed the doll and quickly went to the exit before the seller changed his mind. But when she was back in her room, the doll opened her eyes, grabbed the girl by the throat and began to strangle her. The girl was so scared that she lost consciousness. And when I woke up, I saw that I had become a doll myself and was standing on a shelf in a store next to other dolls. And he can't even move, scream, or cry. Now she could only wait for someone to come buy it. Then she would strangle him and live his life until the spider-like owner comes again and brings her back to his store. That's a really scary story. She scares the hell out of me. I wonder how the JJ is doing. Meanwhile... So it's my turn to scare you. Well, I'm not Mikey, so I won't take too long and just start telling you a scary story right away. The Dark Well. One mother often told the girl, if you see an open hatch on the street, do not come close. The girl knew what her mother would say, but she asked anyway, why? A hand will come out of there, grab, and he'll take it down the well, my mother replied. And then, the girl asked, and then no one knows, my mother said, because no one came back from there. The girl tried to imagine who could live in a dark well. He probably has long arms with claws to grab those who come to the open hatch. And he also probably has long legs to run quickly through the tunnels into which the wells lead. And he must also be very scary and dangerous, since adults always close wells with heavy iron lids. The girl was very scared, but it was also very interesting to look at the monster that lives in the depths of the well. When the girl saw the open hatch, she moved away and looked, waiting for a long clawed hand to stick out. But this has never happened. And once the girl even saw three people open the hatch and go down. They were gone for a long time, but then they came out alive and whole. So the girl thought that this monster from the well was not so big, since it did not touch adults, but attacked only children. One day, the girl even went to an open well and carefully looked inside, but there was nothing to be seen in the darkness. Hey, the girl shouted. Hey, hey, echoed from the depths of the well. Hey, the girl shouted louder and heard an even louder echo in response. If it was an echo, the girl waited, but nothing happened. She was about to leave, but then a boy's head poked out. Are you shouting? The boy asked with displeasure. Well, I am, the girl replied. What do you need? The boy frowned and glowered at the girl. Nothing. The girl replied, and just in case, she took two steps back in order to escape in time, if anything. But the boy just snorted and climbed back into the well. They're shouting around here, he said, and disappeared into the darkness. The girl immediately went back. What are you doing there? What is it? She asked. What? Mimicked a voice from the darkness. We're playing here. Tag games. The girl immediately imagined how much fun it was to play in a place where it was always very, very dark. And she wanted to play with them too. And take me to play, she shouted. Well, that's another thing, the boy replied with displeasure. And you probably can't? Yes, I can, the girl exclaimed. Yes, I'm the best player. Well, Okay, after a long silence, a voice answered from the depths of the well. Come down! Exclaiming joyfully, the girl climbed down, completely forgetting what her mother had told her. There, in the depths of the well, it was not at all as dark as it seemed, and there were many different children, big and small. But for some reason, they did not play, but sat sad and sad. Some even cried quietly. The girl quickly lost the desire to play. She began to look for the place where she went down into the well, but could not find it in any way. The girl wandered through the tunnels for a long time, until one day she saw a bright spot of an open hatch from above. Then she quickly climbed up, 
But when the girl got out, it turned out that many, many years had passed there, the girl's parents had died a long time ago, and completely different people lived in the apartment. Well, how do you like this story? Probably really creepy and scary. Remember, never go down into open hatches and wells. You don't know what horrors may await you there. JJ, I found an open well. There's someone hissing inside. Let's go down there. Mikey, did you hit your head? Don't go in there for anything. It's time for furniture. I'm putting a bed. I'm putting anvils in the corners. And I'm also decorating them with foliage on top. I put a workbench, stoves, and hang lanterns on top. I'm putting up racks for armor, as well as laying a large carpet on the floor. I plant a flower. Then I hang up my armor. On the top floor, I remove the extra blocks. And instead, I put half blocks of wood. I'm also staggering the chests on each side. I'm putting glowing blocks on top. Great, my house is ready. I wonder how Mikey's doing. Wow, Mikey, you've got a great Nerpo. It's just amazing. I really like him. It's as creepy as your story. Just great. Thanks, JJ. I'm glad you liked it. But I can't wait to see what you've built. Hurry up and run forward, Mikey. I've already finished my part of the job. Wow, JJ. You've got a great house head. He's so big and sinister. It scares me. Even though I know it's a building, I like it. Thank you, Mikey. I'm glad you liked my house head. But I'm very tired. I think we can end here. Yes, JJ. I think it's time to go to bed. Bye-bye. Good night to you. Thanks for watching, friends. Subscribe and like. And also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you don't miss new videos. Bye bye. <sighs>《Hello everyone, dear friends! The weather is just wonderful outside today. I wonder what adventures await me today? What? I think Mikey's coming to me. Mikey, it's open. — JJ, do you remember the name of the game where you had to plant plants and protect your plot? — Maybe you mean plants via zombies? — I have just a great idea, JJ. Let's build plants via zombies today. — Wow, Mikey, the idea is really great. — Okay, I agree. But first, let's welcome our dear viewers. — Of course, JJ, go ahead. <laughs> Hello everyone, dear friends. We have a challenge in Minecraft. We will build plants via zombies today. We will have one round in total, and you decide who won in the comments. Are you ready, Mikey? Of course, JJ. Then we're starting. Special construction. To build a zombie, I will need blocks of terracotta and concrete. I'm starting construction. To begin with, I build the base of my zombie's legs out of brown terracotta, Put brown concrete on top to make his shoes. Here, I build the outline of my zombie's legs out of blue concrete. Build a pillar up. Finish building a little here. Now I'm building a pillar out of brown concrete. Building the outline of Zombie's shirt out of white concrete, as well as his tie out of red concrete. I'm completing the outline of his body. Now, I'm building Zombie's shoulder, his arm, now, on the other hand, I'm building a second zombie arm on the same principle. I put some blocks on the bottom of his shirt sleeve. I'm starting to build his arm out of green concrete. I'm rebuilding a little bit here. I'm building up empty space with blocks. 
On the other hand, I also put blocks of brown and green concrete, It seems that this is where it needs to be completed. I build up the empty space with blocks. Zombies' hands are ready. I'm building up zombies' pants from the bottom with blue blocks of concrete. I'm building up the side of his legs so far. Now the back. the second side and finally I'm building up zombies pants from the front I'll rebuild a little bit here I put blocks of green concrete make a hole in zombies pants make another one on his other leg I build up an empty space with blocks of blue concrete. Now I'm building up his arm with blocks of brown concrete. I start to build up the back of the building with blocks. Cover the empty space with blocks a little more. In front, I build up the empty space with blocks of white concrete on one side. Rebuild a little. Now, I build up on the other side. I'm starting to build a zombie's head out of green concrete. I'm building the lower part of his jaw. I'm building up empty space with blocks. I'm building his teeth out of white concrete. I'm building up space here with blocks of red terracotta. I keep building his head. I'm building blocks here. I finish building zombie teeth. Here, I rebuild and put blocks of red terracotta. I continue to build up the zombie's head with blocks. Build his nose. Add a few more blocks. Build his eyes out of white and black blocks. Just a little more. I'm building the outline of the zombie's head. Building up the empty space in front with blocks. Now from the side. From the back. From the second side. And now from above. I finish the ears on the sides of his head. Great! My zombie house is ready. I wonder how Mikey is doing. Meanwhile, I decided to build a plant in this round. 
because JJ will definitely choose the construction of zombies, I'm starting construction. To begin with, I put blocks of green and lime concrete. Build the base of my plant from them. I'm building its leaves. to build its stem out of green concrete. Finally, I start to build the head of my plant. Friends, I think you've already guessed what kind of plant it is, but I'll remind you just in case. I'm building a pea shooter. Begin to build up his head with blocks of concrete. Close the empty spaces with blocks. much left. I'm building a leaf on top. Great! The second round has come to an end. Wow! Mikey, you've got a great pea shooter. Well done! Thanks, JJ, but I can't wait to see what you've built! Follow me! Wow, JJ, how amazing zombie you turned out, I like it! Thank you, Mikey. I am very glad that you like my house. I think we can end here. Yes, JJ, I think it's time to go to bed. Bye-bye! Good night to you! Thanks for watching, friends. Subscribe and like. And also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you don't miss new videos. Bye bye.